I love planning. I love planning. I love planning. I love planners. I love stationery. I love organization. I love tracking things. I don't love the fact that someone is currently leaf blowing outside. I love planning. My friends literally call me type A as opposed to type B because I'm very detail oriented. I love keeping track of things, tedious admin work. That's my jam. I don't know why. So I've been on this planner journey for about, I don't know, four years now. I started from paper planning and then I moved to digital planning. Now I'm in a place where I can actually film a video about it because I'm really happy with my setup and I really want to fangirl about it. So if you couldn't tell by the title, I am showing you my Notion setup today and I also did integrate some paper planning into my routine. But before I jump into my actual Notion setup, I did want to talk a little bit about what exactly I look for in digital planning and just planning in general, what I need to feel like I have my shit together. So I really wanted a calendar that just basically tracked everything that has a date attached to it. So events, appointments, deadlines, see the different categories in my life and just have it all laid out just so I know when I'm more free and when I'm busy and stuff like that. So a calendar app isn't hard to find. The most common one is Google Calendar and that's the one that I use. What's really nice about Google Calendar is that I can sync it up to the calendar app on my iPad and my MacBook, but then also on my phone, I have an Android phone and so I can access the Google Calendar on there as well. The second thing that I needed was a master to-do list and this one was a really big thing for me. I had specific criteria for it. The main ones were that I wanted to be able to categorize all of my tasks and be able to see them by the category. I wanted to categorize specific categories into more broad categories. So I have chores and art projects under my a personal umbrella. And then I have like all of my different subjects all under a, an academic umbrella. I want categories, but I also want to be able to see all these tasks by their due dates. I just want to be able to see like, okay, on this day, today, what tasks do I need to get done? Tomorrow, what tasks do I need to get done? And I wanted to be able to move the tasks from one day to another really easily. For a while, I was really happy with the app Tick Tick. I was really happy with the free version. It did exactly what I just told you right now. Um, and then it also had a Pomodoro timer built in and I love using Pomodoro timer whenever I'm studying. And then the third thing that I wanted was a place where I could just dump my whole life. I wanted a place that housed my whole life. For a while that was my file facts planner. I just wanted a place where I can write notes down. I wanted a place where I can track different things like my expenses and my calories. All of my different kind of like academic planning, project planning, references that I needed to refer to once in a while. I just wanted one place for all of that. I was using my file facts but when it comes to paper planning for me, I just couldn't maintain the consistency because it was just an extra step to take out my planner, open it to the right page, write it down, make it look nice, make it look organized, and it involved allotting a lot of time to keep up a paper planner, in my opinion. I started playing around with Notion a couple weeks ago, I would say. As I'm gonna show you my setup, I have my Google Calendar embedded into Notion, which is really nice. Those are like the main digital apps that I use. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description in case you're only curious about certain parts of my setup. I'll also leave a lot of links down below of different YouTube videos that I watched to help me learn more about Notion and the capabilities that it has to make it so flexible. It is a learning curve and I do recommend watching those videos because I am not going to delve in to the basic mechanics of how Notion works. I'm just gonna show you my setup and how I made it work for my life and my planning needs. All right, so here we have my Notion setup. And so you can see here on the sides, I have five main sections. So my dashboard has everything that I need to see on a daily basis. Like I mentioned before, I have my Google Calendar here. I have a lot of other calendars as well, but this is like the main one that I want to see on a daily basis anyway. And then I'm going to go a little bit more into detail with this later, but 
As an overview, I have a today section. So in my today section, I have all of the tasks that I need to do today. And then I have some quick links of things that I usually access on a daily basis. So these are some trackers and then um, a course that I'm taking right now. And then I have my workout schedule here just as a reference. Underneath that, I have my, my video tracker of all of my videos that are currently in progress. And then I have a tomorrow section of all my tasks that are dated for tomorrow. And then I have another section for later this week. And so I'm gonna start with the task section because as you can see, it is a very important part of my planning. This is really cool, honestly. This is what made me really sold on uh, Notion. I'm gonna leave a link down below to a video that helped me set this up. The video will explain a little bit better about how you can manipulate, I guess, the different filters and sort options that you have, as well as the different views. The main difference that I have between that setup and my current setup is that I utilize dates here. And so this is the date property on Notion. If I click on this, I can see a calendar with all of the dates. There's also a reminder option. You can put end date, you can include the time, a lot of different options there, but I mostly just put in the date. What's cool about this option is that on my dashboard, I have this filter so that it shows anything that is on or before today's date. And then the check mark, which is right here, the done option is not checked. That's in case I have any outstanding tasks from the day before. If I have this date on the first instead, for example, it still shows up and it shows up at the very top because I have the table sorted for ascending order for the date. Wow, that was bad English. That's mainly why I wanted the date option and it just automatically detects that today is July 2nd and that's the tasks that need to be shown in this specific iteration of this table. So going back to the tasks option, as you can see, I have a done column, which has a checkbox property. If you're not familiar with Notion, every time you add a entry into a database, it makes a new page. So I have the task, I have the date, I have categories, which are big picture categories. I mentioned before for my tasks, I wanted an umbrella category and then within the umbrella I wanted specific categories. So I have a category select and a tag select and so if you look at the category select I have a lot of different categories here that are a little bit more generalized and then the tags are a little more detailed and these these pertain to specific projects that I have. And then I also have a status column. I don't really use this too much. Sometimes it's useful in some views, but other times I don't really use it. Everything that's showing up here has a filter where everything that's not checkmarked and then it's within the next month. I have other options here of completed everything, personal, and then I have a calendar view. Calendar view is useful if I wanted to look at things at a bigger picture. What's nice about the calendar views, I can easily just drag things around if I really wanted to change the date for multiple tasks very quickly. And so that's the task database, and this is going to show up everywhere. In my project section is where all of my non-academic to-dos go. So a lot of the stuff that I have tasks for, I categorize them, and these are different views for all of those tasks. So if we click on this, for example, so I have tasks here, and as you can see, it is an iteration of the tasks, the main tasks database that I showed you before. But then this filter is so that it only shows everything where the tag, so that's one of the more specific categories, is freelancing service. And there are different options here, but the only ones I wanted to see is the freelancing service um, to-dos. So that's really useful. But what's also really nice is below it, I also have a lot of different resources and different things that I want to look into. This is an iteration of, iteration is probably not the right word, a view. Yeah, this is a specific view of my task database. But as you can see here, I actually disabled some of the properties that I don't need to see. So I already filtered the tasks so that it only shows me a specific tag. I don't need to see that all of these tasks are under the freelance tag. Um, and I don't need to see the category either because they're all work related. I didn't even tag these ones, lol. And I really like that option as well that you can change 
what you see in terms of properties with each viewing of a database. All of these look pretty much the same. The one that I want to show you is my videos. So I have a video tracker, which is its own database, and then I also have a tasks view as well. My video tracker, it's pretty simple. I just have the publish date, I have what status it is, and then I have different check marks to see how far along I am with finishing the video project. Up here I have different views of the video tracker. So current projects have has a filter of either in progress or not started when it comes to the status. And then I have a list here of all of the videos, and then I have another one for just the ones tagged with idea. On my dashboard, what I have showing is everything that has a status of in progress. I have it as a list view, but it keeps the, the layout looking really simple because I don't want my dashboard to be so cluttered. Moving on to the collection section over here, I have three different types of collections. So in the difference between collections and projects is that collections don't really have any tasks or to do's. They're mostly tracking. So it's after the fact or things that I need to refer to or lists as you can see. The lists are kind of boring. References are kind of boring. They all look pretty similar. They're just pages full of information. The one list that I want to show you is the wallet. So I'm not going to click on them because it has all of my bank information and, and other very sensitive information like that. But what's really cool is that this is a gallery view. Because it's a, a gallery view, I can just see the name of the card and then I have to click on it to see the information of the card. So the main things that I want to show you here that's worth mentioning are my trackers. So my expense tracker, it basically functions as an Excel page. I have different views for it for um, depending on the month. Uh, this is like half of last month's actually, because this is when around the time when I started using Notion. I have a filter on it where it's on or before the last date of the month and then on or after the first date of the month. And then I have it sorting by date. I have the date, I have the details, I have the category, and then I have debit, credit, and savings depending on where the money is coming from or going into. What's cool is that this is the numbers property and then I can change how the number is represented. And so I have them on dollars right now. And then it automatically puts a dollar sign on the front. And then when I put a negative sign, like if I put negative, it automatically makes it a dollar sign and it deducts the it deducts this amount from the total down here. And so at the bottom, I have basic summations of my savings, my credit and my, my debit. And it's just down here. And then I have a count of how many transactions transactions I made. I guess that is I don't have to put quotations around that they are transactions for July. At the beginning of every month, I just have my starting balances so I can add and subtract accordingly. Next, I have my calorie tracker, which is very fun. This is one of the first things I set up because I started getting into calorie counting and uh, tracking my exercises and my macros. And I wanted a nice database for doing that. What's really cool is like my calories tracker and my workout tracker. They work together, as you can see here. I will leave a video down below on how relational databases work. Is that what they're called? And how you connect two different databases together so that you can use information from one database in another database. I'm going to jump into my fitness page real quick and then go back to my calorie tracker a little bit later. So what we have here in my fitness page is I have my workout routine and then I have resources. And then down here I have another database. This is DPA, which stands for daily physical activity. And I have a calendar that shows all the workouts that I did. And this is after the fact, this is me recording all of my workouts. If I click on this, for example, I have a date property, a tag to save its strength or uh, cardio, calories burn duration. And then here is the relation to my calorie counting. We'll jump back in to my workout routine over here. We can just click on one of them. Let's click on arms, chest, and back. I have a routine here of all of the exercise that I like to do, which part of my body it works out, my reps, my sets. I have videos here in case I didn't want to follow this routine and I wanted to follow video instead. I have my push-ups tracker because I'm trying to get better at push-ups. So now let's jump back in 
to the calorie counter. I have a separate app that I use to actually track my calories. Right now I'm using my fitness pal. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. I use my fitness pal. It tracks my macros. It tracks the food that I eat. It automatically calculates the calories that I take within the day. But I want to list it on here so that I can see my progress. And then here is where how it's connected relationally to the DPA tracker. So this is the same arms page that I opened a while ago. But what's cool is right when I put this page in, it automatically adds in the calories burned. Over here, I have a number and then it adds it here. And then I have a formula so that I have a number of net calories, net calorie intake per day. Since filming this video, I actually updated my net calories to make it a little bit more accurate. So I used a BMR calculator online and then added it on here. So now I have a better representation of what my actual net calories are in the day. And then I have my macros here um, in terms of percentages of my calorie intake. On to the last section, my academic academic section, which is very interesting and also very intricate. And I am a university student, so planning and uh, keeping track of my academics is uh, of utmost importance. Here I have planning and then I have my current courses that I'm taking. And my current courses, I'm only taking one course. And then I have a to-do section, which is just a calendar view of my tasks relating to all the courses that I'm taking. The planning section, that's pretty interesting. So we can hop on into the curriculum section. These are the different programs that I'm taking. I have a major, two minors, electives to complete my bachelor's degree up here, and then I have a diploma that I'm doing on the side. So if I click on one of these and open it up as a page, so most of these pages just have a course list. So it has the courses I need to take, I need to be taking six courses for a minor and then um, the category that it falls into to meet the requirements. I'll show you the semester thing later on because it's connected to my roadmaps uh, page. So the roadmap section is where I do all of my course planning on what courses I'm going to be taking in the following semesters to make sure that I graduate at a certain time and I'm not missing any courses. This is a Kanban view and then at the very top I have all of the different semesters I have coming up and then this no semesters inbox section with courses that I still need to place in to a semester. These titles over here, so there's electives, communications minor, those are the titles of the different programs that I had back in my curriculum database. So that shows me which program each of these courses are sorted into. In my curriculum section on my course list, I had a semester column. That is a roll up of which semester I am planning to take it on based on this roadmap. So if I move them around, the semester will change as well on that course list. Sometimes the courses that I registered into aren't necessarily the courses that I plan to take or want to take. So I also have a view here in a table of all the courses that I am registered for, uh, what semester and the curriculum. This whole overview, low key kind of complicated, not gonna lie. I didn't find any videos of anything like this because I don't really think people do this. I don't know, I just like organizing things. If you want me to make a video on how I do my course planning with this roadmap, let me know and I will definitely make a video on it. Yeah, this just kind of shows at a glance when I'm taking what courses and when I'm estimating my graduation to be. Back to the academics page, we have this Chem 181 shortcut here. And this is originally in my electives database under my curriculum. You can see here that I have a grade calculator. So I have a formula over here that calculates the weight of the grade that I have, and then it sums up my current grade in the course given what I've already completed. Fun fact, I'm taking this course as a pass fail and I already passed, so technically I don't really need to do any more work, but it's an interesting course, so I'm still gonna be studying it a little bit more. And then down here, I have my lecture notes. So I am currently experimenting with note taking within Notion. I don't know yet if I like it or not. This is just an elective, so I wasn't taking it too seriously. I will leave a link down below of a video that I based my system on. Let's click on food additives. I have the objectives here, I have the different uh, subtopics, and then I have all of these different toggle sections, which is really useful because I can see at a glance all of the different topics that we have, but if I needed the details on wax additives, I can see a little bit more information on it, but 
at a glance, it'll be easy for me to find specific topics. So that is my Notion setup. It is very complicated. There are a lot of nitty gritty, itty bitty details that I can get into. I love it. It's so versatile. It's great. It's flexible. I literally just said that by saying it's versatile, but whatever. That's most of my planning, but I realized after using Notion for a couple of days that there were a couple small needs that I needed that could only be satisfied with a paper planner. So the main thing that I was really looking for is basically a glorified scratch pad where I can write down every little idea, task, reminder very quickly without needing to open up Notion, make a new page, you know, go through all of that extra fuss when I just need to like get this idea down. I wanted a paper planner where I could see my daily tasks without getting distracted by Notion because there's a lot of stuff on there. It's really nice to have a paper planner because I can just have it sitting on my desk or wherever I'm working and easily write things down or reference it. And so that's basically my whole planner setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it for informative. I hope this video isn't too long because I just love rambling about planning and organization. I'll probably make a little, a couple more videos like this whenever I have some ideas that I want to share. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you want to see specific kinds of planning and organization related videos. Subscribe if you want to see more of me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.